That's just the cost of owning one of these big puffers. Those big teeth. So we can see some things going on in here. The fish will just chow down on it. Big old chunk. Elmer's less camera shy. These are some new fish that I got from Bob. So these turtles are real tough. Corey from Aquarium Co-op here. Today we're in the fish room and we're doing some more filming. Uh, really, I'm kind of making these videos for me to stay active in my aquarium, so then hopefully you stay active in your aquariums. All kinds of stuff, and the goal is put a substantial video together so you can watch it. I've, I've grown accustomed to that again. I've got uh, Fish Tank Mike, aka Aquapros, up on there listening to his 35-minute you know, video while I work. It's kind of nice to have something and kind of just look over every five minutes and go, oh yeah, that's what that thing is. And uh, so today I'm going to start by feeding the fish. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to see if I can delve into the sink area a little bit. Maybe clean up, maybe replacing it. It did come, the replacement, so we'll see. Um, grab my rapashi that I'm going to feed. So I made rapashi yesterday. Oh, who put this ladder here? Um, if you've never made rapashi, you just boil water. You mix it with the, the powder, and it sets up kind of like jello. And so you end up with these, like, cubes you can make them any size you want obviously and uh because it has the gelatin in it it stays water stable for at least 24 hours and so what i like to do is feed pretty big chunks so like that's you're like wow that's a lot of food and it is but the shrimps the plecos the the fish and uh the snails and everything will just chow down on it and so you know, my fish room hasn't seen this in basically ever since it's been here. Uh, I've been lazy. And so what I do is you just you chuck it in. And they saw it yesterday, so they might know a little bit more what it is. But you don't get normal adoption. I've been feeding these fish flake food and other floating foods for the last two years, basically. And so you can see they're just like, yeah, we know food went in. Where, where is it? They don't realize it's down there. So it takes, when you ever switch a food, it can take a week or two, especially when it's something like that where they've only ever known one way of eating. Now these guys, they haven't been in my care as long. Like I've had these guys for maybe six weeks, maybe. And so maybe the previous breeder that I bought them from fed food that sank. And so these guys know what's going on. They're like, oh yeah, I go down here and I eat. They're not stuck at the top going, where's the floating food? And so that's just a little tidbit um, for you guys. And here, this is two breeding projects going, which one of them you haven't seen yet. Um, but it's the dwarf Cleroplecos. So these guys, or the Plecos only get like that big. And then I also got four Buffalo head cichlids. You can see one's hanging out like right there. Now those guys look dumb until you see their bright blue eyes and they're breeding and they don't really have swim bladders, so they only like hop on stuff like gobies. They just kind of chill, which makes it cool. Now, I'm gonna put a big old piece of food in here, and there's only four fish plus two plecos. That would be a dumb idea. Normally, except this will stay together, they can feed on it, and we're gonna feed all of these nerite snails and stuff that are eating all the algae. So in it goes, just like that. One more thing I wanted to point out, my tanks are running pretty cool. So I heat, so right here you can see, I'm heating to 70 degrees, but the temperature in here kind of holds roughly to 74-ish, depending, and if I bump it up too much more, it gets too hot to work in here. So if I grab my thermometer, which if you get yourself a good like cooking thermometer, this one's like 30 bucks, works pretty well. We can see, so even though, you know, it's supposed to be 70 in here, what do the tanks run? Because there's a light on top and that kind of stuff. So we're running about 72, 71.9 there. And that's perfectly fine for most tropical fish. And I say most, not all, but most. And if, you know, we can, we can kind of keep coming down the road here. Now in here, we've got Corydoras hastatus. So that schooling fish in the back there kind of darting over. Now in this tank, what needs to happen? One, kind of a big overhaul. Doesn't look good, there's algae. Yeah, we've got a bunch of snails, but no one's touching the algae on the background. There's a couple straggler uh, black chin live bears in here. And uh, there's no hardscape. There's a rock, and uh, that's it. So a lot of stuff needs to go on in here. Actually, there's two live bears. Uh, but we still chunk in kind of the same amount of food, and that'll let everybody come and feast on it for the next few hours. So especially, this is also really good 
if you're on vacation or something like that and you're not buying an auto feeder, you can have all the squares made up and just go, just put a chunk in and it's not as, as volatile uh, compared to normal foods, like maybe this bottom feeder food from Legit that I'm playing with. But half the reason I put in food, a lot of people don't understand this. They go, oh my gosh, you're feeding so much or whatever it is. Yes, it's to, is it to feed these guppies? Yes, it is. But actually it's to feed the whole system. What does that mean? Well, I've got plants, look, plants, plants, plants. And they're a little bit yellow. They want more food, more nitrogen, more nitrates, more fish poop, more this. I've also got algae. I don't really want that to grow, so I'm not really trying to grow that. But there's also lots of uh, bacteria in the center of these lava rocks that will consume nitrates as well, and I want to feed those. And so this piece of food is disproportionate to the fish that are in here, but not disproportionate to the 40-gallon aquarium that we're supporting with the food. So start trying to think of that a little more of how do I support the entire ecosystem you know, yes, we've got the kind of the dwarf rabbit snails. They don't get too big. That's kind of awesome. We've got the fish. We've got nerite snails. But what about like the copepods? You know, basically like the little seed shrimps and the little, all little crustaceans, the planarias, all the stuff that lives in the gravel, all that kind of stuff also needs food sources. Now, when you have a ton of fish, it gets a lot easier. So, you know, but when planted tanks are densely planted, you don't even know how many fish you have or how many organisms you have a lot of times. So... This tank here, this is, uh, you know, I let Bob Steenfot, Steenfot Aquatics, have all the stir buys out of here. He was saying how he's looking for some, and I go, I got some, and I'm changing what I'm doing with this tank, because lots of cherry shrimps. So this was just cherry shrimps and uh, stir by quarries. But, you know, again, a big old chunk. And I, I guarantee if we come back in like a minute and a half, that thing will be mobbed. So again, we're feeding like in here, yesterday, I actually put in three chunks because there's so many shrimp. And that would seem insane. Like you just put so much food in there. And the answer is yes, I did. But when you go to count shrimps, like every time you can count one, there are 10 more you're not counting on the back of the rock, on the underside of the rock, on the back of the sponge filter, especially in a planet tank. So there's a few hundred shrimp in here. I wouldn't be shocked that if we actually counted them, there's like, wow, there's 422. There is a ton of shrimp and it's real easy to underfeed. I think we're living in a culture when it comes to the hobby right now where if, you know, people want you to water change more, they want you to feed less, they want you to do all these things. And I think we're missing out a lot on that. We're overcorrecting. And so if I get the light back up here. Now, still, if you've been following me for a long time, this tank has always been cloudy, and we've never been able to figure out why. We've used UV sterilizers, we've used beneficial bacteria, we've used, uh, you know, like anti-clouding agents. We've done all this. We've done 100% water changes twice a day for weeks. Uh, don't know. We actually might swap this aquarium, but I hate giving up. I love, like, I don't want to go, well, I just, I guess I'll never know. I hate that part. I love knowing eventually, oh, it was... And you might say, oh, it's a substrate, but there's other tanks with that same substrate. It's a plant. There's other tanks with the same plant, same filtration, same water change schedule, same food, same. But something is different. Did it, you know, is there, I don't think we did anything different that I can tell, but that's always what a, a hobbyist says, right? So most of the fish over here are starting to learn, hey, you eat from the bottom. Still a few. The males are still up top looking. Shrimp are starting to, to get on there. And you could, you could paint this rapache on a rock or something and make it a huge surface for all these guys to feed. So, But I do this because it's easier. Um, the turtles, first time they got it was yesterday. They loved it. Put a couple of chunks in here. Let's do it. They usually start chomping down on it once they realize what's going on. All the little cast off bits are getting eaten by the guppies. So that's nice. And... Uh, these are some new fish that I got from Bob. And Bob got them from Dan's Fish originally, uh, which we're working with now. And by working with, I've, I've ordered some fish and I've been kind of testing quality and, and that kind of stuff. And soon you'll probably, you'll probably see an update from us. They're like, hey, we are working with them. Everything's been going well so far. The, the discount code Aquarium Coop, the same one we have for like Aquahuna, will save you 5% and get us a kickback. Their, their prices are expensive, but they have rarer fish and 
shipping uh, is kind of like an overnight thing or very quick, but if you order just like two fish, you're gonna go, shipping's $50, it's, it's insane. But if you order like 10 fish, it's also $50, like it spreads much better. So Aquahuna is kind of the cheaper stuff with less rare, and Dan's fish would be like filling in a lot more of the rarer stuff. And I like that he buys from some of the breeders. So like this was, you know, a lot of these things are hobbyist bread that I can buy from them. Oh, interesting thing. Here's a piece of food from yesterday that the snails have been working on. So part of it is these guys are new, probably didn't eat very well, not that many of them. Plus Bob caught the last of the trout goodies in here so that, uh, you know, so that he could have a colony. So I'm actually gonna reach in and grab this because I don't need to have an extra, extra block in there, even though the plants will consume it and all that. Uh, and I can just drop right in here. Now that's another thing I like about the Rapashi food that was not doable with a normal flake food or something. You'd be like, well, it's in there now. That's what we're doing. Um, the other kind of good thing about Rapashi that maybe you guys don't know is that it doesn't have any like air or it doesn't have to hydrate. So it's full of water. So fish can't really overeat on it. And so that's nice. You don't have to worry about bloating when it comes to goldfish and some of the other, you know, like trophies, that kind of stuff. Um, did these guys eat it? I thought, I tested them yesterday, and I thought, maybe not, because it's the eel and these bettas. And I thought, well, you know, they're not really known for eating rapashi, but I don't see any left. So, either the snails eat it all, or we'll find out. Oh, look at that. They're going for it. I guess they took a couple bites. Now, something like this, one of the reasons I'm feeding early today is because I'm going to work in here, right? And I want to be able to, as I'm walking around, just see who's eating, what are they doing, you know, who's taking bites out of it, how are the fish adapting, you know, or they see, you can see the little baby turtles over here getting their nom on. Oh, he bit that one's arm. They do that often. So these turtles are real tough. Like they just bite and then that's how it is. So I'll throw another chunk in here towards the back, give them another, another feeding station. Ugh. So sometimes when it comes to feeding, it's just getting the food spread out enough and, and it's something simple as that. So, all right, we're gonna feed more turtles. I gotta clean up mess. I've got Mike coming in like three or four days and we're gonna, oh my God, no. So you heard me say, oh my God, no, there's a turtle that looks like it got stuck upside down. It looks to be still alive. Whoa, I think just Humpty Dumpty fell over and you can see he went poop and everything. So he might've been there since yesterday. Like, are you okay, buddy? You can see he pooped on himself. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. I've never seen that. So I've had these guys for over 10 years. And if anything, I would say having a basking area has provided, like, that's more of a chance to have a problem. Which is super weird that he somehow, how would he have done that? Maybe getting out? Nobody would have fell back. Getting in, I'm not sure how he fell that way, but that's definitely on the. Well, let's keep an eye on, an eye on that from now on. And uh, I'm going to build a pond long term, but that sketches me out. Even though that could be that could be a once in a lifetime thing. Like I maybe never see it again. It's been ten years, easy, and never had it happen. But boy, that was scary. Uh, as you saw, I turned the camera off. Was instantly like, gotta see what's going on with this turtle. So let me put some food in, let those guys get some snacks going, feed a couple more. These guys get like five cubes. So they don't bite on each other too much. But yeah, that was scary. I'll keep an eye on him all day. You can see he's got, you know, it's kind of like he had the poop ran down his shell. So he's going to have to call him stripey for a little bit till that dissolves in. And uh, yeah, that was scary. Good news is turtles can stay out outside of land for a while, so you know they they can do that. But still, being stuck on his upside down like that was not it's not my definition of a good time. So all these tanks pretty much getting torn down, making room as you guys have seen in another video. That that should happen this week if everything goes to plan. The Shabunkin goldfish they're not pooping green yet. Oh wait, a little bit of green. Yeah, that means they're starting starting to work on the uh, on the duckweed. So we can see some things going on in here. 
I've got the beginnings of some blue green algae. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, so that's not great. Uh, and my, my sword wants some more root tabs. How do you know, Corey? You see all the bite holes and all the, the snails are on it? They know it's weak. And what happens with a sword that needs more food? The outside ones are the oldest leaves, right? So all the ones on the very outside. They start dying back and getting translucent. The new growth in the center still does really well. So that is the number one sign of not enough food. I'll keep making new leaves, but still not enough food. So a couple things you can do, put root tabs. Uh, the other thing that you can do is start overfeeding or putting more food in. It'll still work its way in there. And you can see, you know, what happens in substrate. Maybe you can. Bubbles and poop and all that starts getting down in there. And that's what, that's what we want. We want it to break down. So put a couple cubes in here. And then long term, I will put some root tabs and that kind of stuff. Just not right this instant. Why wouldn't you do it right now, Corey? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I've got a lot of stuff I want to kind of touch and check on in the fish room. And if I put my arms in there and I reach all the way down and put root tabs, I'm going to come back up with duckweed. And that duckweed's going to be in my arms and I'll spread it around. And right now it's only this aquarium. So you know, the, the less, like I'm willing to sacrifice that plant if these guys can, uh, you know, basically clear it up for me. So I'm not going to sacrifice it, but I'm going to try and do it as the last thing I do today or another day and get some extra nutrients to there and just keep going. We, we saw, or I saw that Elmer took a big old bite yesterday, but he only took one bite of this. So I'm not sure if he's in love with it or hates it yet, but the uh, corridors and stuff probably like it pretty good. You want to take a bite out of any of those, Elmer? One of the good things from changing the lighting, Elmer's less, less camera shy. And so that's been a good, uh, you know, a good little bonus, I would say. All right, I'm gonna throw a couple of these with Ladybird. Ladybird is uh, currently destroying my aquarium. You'll see that she just, no matter what I do, she goes nuts and like, feed me, even if I fed her five minutes ago, which I haven't fed her yet today, but she'll do this 10 minutes after I feed. And that's just the cost of owning one of these big puffers. Those big teeth, they scratch. And you, you might not be able to see it really well. I'll see if I can show you from the other side. Let me see if I can see it from the end here. Yeah, you see all those scratches? That's her teeth. I did add this little uh, Coralia power head. It's added a little bit of flow. They don't make, at least I can't see it. It seems like they don't make the Coralia like eights anymore that were awesome and big, which no one needed them except you had a giant aquarium. So that could be why no one makes them anymore. But you know, the, there's definitely algae in here, but all these trout goodies, which is a lot of them now, they are working on it. I can see them picking at it. Right now, they're gonna frenzy over food. But I think over the next three to six months, there won't be any algae left in here as long as I leave them. And I'll do a little bit of manual removal as well, but they're working on it, so that's good. Uh, I'm gonna prepare her clams, because she's, you know, she's getting a little antsy. But she, she knows right now, she's just watching me going, when you're standing this close, you put them in. Go ahead and put them in now. So I'll go grab them. This is what she does. She bags and bags and bags. She will play my wife against me where it's like, I haven't eaten, dad hasn't fed me at all. So we'll put a little bit of food in there. I don't always feed her the total max amount because she'll gorge herself and it costs a lot of money. And just like that, the clam's gone. Now you may see in there, there's a few different clam shells and uh, mussel shells. So if we look at like over here, a couple different mussel shells. I've been trying to step her up to a bigger clam to help break those teeth down, but we're right in between. So she really struggles with those, but uh, can eat these like potato chips. So we're working on it. Lots of little babies. The Hillstream loaches keep having babies. Back here is where all the, the horse face loaches have been hanging out lately under this plant. And plants have just been spreading kind of everywhere. Got to fight some black beard algae. That's still on the to-do list. And uh, yeah, the flagfish are in there, babies are in there. Still a lot to do. This thing, 
doesn't get my seal of approval. It's supposed to rotate and change the flow. Guess what? Doesn't. It sucks. So don't worry. I don't tell you what product that is because you're not going to buy it. It doesn't work because Amazon special for like two for 10 bucks and they suck. So, yep, that's, that's where we're at with that one. That one, you know, test and stuff all the time. Oh, wait, I have the box right here. Don't buy these. I mean, I guess you can buy them. They don't work for me. Whatever, uh, the Auto Wave Maker, this Chinese brand. I've tried two of them. They're both not doing so hot. So my advice is, yeah, don't buy those ones. So remember when I said like three cubes, like isn't even enough for this many shrimp? One, when we were looking in here just a little bit ago, you didn't know there was 10 million Malaysian trumpet snails in here. They came out, food came in, they go, oh, what is up? I should be seeing what's going on out here. And then you see all of the snails and the shrimp dominating the food, right? So you go, clearly lots of shrimp, clearly lots of snails, but then look how many shrimp and everything still aren't getting food. So I'm not gonna go in and specifically just like put more and more food in, but this is where, this is the best example I have currently of the deceptively, there's a lot in there. Kind of the same thing going on over here, feeding snails. You know, the guppies are eating too, but there's always a lot more going on in an aquarium than you know. And then there'll be examples where that's not going on, right? So we're feeding the Hestatus and the snails, ram's horn. Then you roll over here. Nope, nobody feeding on it yet. So, you know, you gotta stay engaged, but you know, it, it just something I, I just want to teach a little bit, I guess. That's, I'm always trying to teach from what I've learned. You see there's pygmy quarries and the sword tails eating on this over here. So yeah, if I notice something, I, I try to, to show it off. And sometimes it's hard to show off in video. You know, you, when I put food in and I go feed everything else and I look back and I go, oh, wow, look at this. I always break out the camera and explain what's going on or why and, and all of that. And, and you know... I just thought maybe that's a good thing to show off today. Uh, yep, turtle's still getting the noms on. All the turtles, that, that one that was upside down that scared the life out of me, still doing fine. You know, they're all, they're all doing fine. So what else am I doing right now? The sink is gonna have to wait. All my tools are at the store expansion that I need. So that ain't gonna work. But I did get some parts for the store expansion and my tanks. Let me, where'd I put those parts? Oh, they're over there. Ha ha. So if we go over here, what I'm trying to do, so this is what's called lock line. Well, there's a few pieces here. There's lock line, that's what this is. And this, you can, you could turn it, right? And so I'm gonna put this on the out of my cancer filters on the 800 gallon, and I can direct the flow up and down, I can extend this and make it longer. There's there's some other stuff over here. Uh, I don't know what exactly I want to do yet. So if we look, where'd my parts go? This is this, where'd all those, this is, oh, right here. Just out of the way, that's all. This is all my, my sink parts that came to replace the sink that doesn't work very well for me. Uh, so I've got lots of extensions. Uh, this is one of the kind of the, you know, ends in a jet thing. This can end it in a fan spray if I want a fan spray. Uh, and then you've got, this is the starting piece. So it screws in, this is three quarters. They make it in three quarters and half inch. And I bought the three quarter one, which I'm not sure what I want yet, but hey, that's what I ordered. And then I bought other parts. So the elbows that I like to use, I like them to be black, so they blend in. And I bought, three quarter, or wait, uh, yeah, three quarters, and I bought one inch. And I wasn't sure which one I was, that I've built everything with yet, and maybe the 1500 gallon, maybe I want one inch, I don't know yet. So then I also bought a bushing, right here, that can go inside. So now, I can take that piece that screws in, kind of like I did right here, and that can go into the one inch, or it can go into the three quarters. Now. I just took a look at the uh, 800, and I think it's three quarters. So we're gonna go try playing with one of these to start out. And I'll show you guys how it does. All right, so here's the 800 gallon. And to, to kind of show you relevance, I'm also planning to do this in Elmer's tank, the 230 gallon. 
and some other tanks as well. So it's not just super giant tanks, but I want to optimize hopefully that. It's not so good, right? And then I want to optimize this one back here. So you see, I kind of have it pushing through the middle of it. And that's where it is, right in that corner. So I'm gonna try and get it so I can really direct it. And maybe I want it, you know, do I want it directed down here or down there? The answer is I don't know yet. Uh, all I know is the way it is currently flowing, not so awesome. So I'm gonna try and improve that. All right, so I got that one installed. I think it might be a little bit too long for this side. So if we look over here, you can see that, uh, you know, it's got the flow going pretty good. So we took, you know, if we side by side that or something, the flow that was there before was actually being really impeded by that knockoff Chinese thing. So I'm glad I'm getting rid of that. Uh, but now we've got better flow in the aquarium overall, which is good. And then uh, I think what I'm gonna do is take this extra long piece it's hard to see because there's the bubbles in the way, but it, it's like a foot long. And I think I can replace it with this one that's six inches long. So it won't stick out as far. And then put that longer piece that go, needs to go through the, uh, the, the, the Twin Peak thing over there, the Double Mountain or whatever it is. Like I want it to come through there and it kind of does, right? You kind of see it does a little bit, but you can also see that because it's kind of just angled right there, it's not it's not really busting through like I want. And this is this is minor uh, optimizing, right? So if most of the flow is kind of ooh and just not going so hot, it's gonna be taken back in by that. So if I can get this extended past, the water it won't grab the same water. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So like this one, not so much of a problem because these ones aren't near each other, the intake versus that. But that one could be a problem and problem is all relative, right? We're just optimizing small percentages here. But, you know, why not? I got the parts, let's do it. I guess I should show you, this is what it looks like up top. I pulled some algae while I was up here. But, uh, you know, it just kind of comes in. I'll see if I can hold this and take this part off at the same time. Usually I gotta stabilize it with one hand, so I don't know if this is gonna work, but you know, the, the benefits of this, something like this would be like, let's say I need, oh, I really need some flow over there. You just do that. And now the water's pointing that way, or oh, I really need to break the water surface for some reason. I hate that sound, but maybe you do. Or you could bend it back this way. Anything you wanna do with it, that's what these systems are good for. But I gotta set it down because I gotta have one hand hold this on the top and take the bottom piece off, so. All right, with a 20 second swap, just like that, it's now shorter. And I chose the fan just to see if I like it any better. Don't know if I do or don't really. And now I can go to the other end of the aquarium and uh, contort my body to get around those pieces that stick out and way into that corner to get that piece on. And we'll hope it's long enough because it's kind of a pain in the butt if it's not. So I did go ahead and add another six inch piece because it has to go in right here. Oh, that almost looks like half inch. I hope it's not. Is that half inch? Let's hope it's three quarter. Anyway, if I wanted to make it all the way out to here at the bare minimum, kinda gotta be that. And I figure you can technically take these apart, but I don't own the tool. Maybe I want like another two links, but let's see how this one does. And the problem I have with this one is you either gotta reach here. So like, here's my arm fully extended, right? I can only reach the corner and then you gotta go another 18 inches that way. Or you gotta get super tiny arms with very little, and you gotta go through here, which is also difficult. So usually I gotta climb on the top of this thing, kind of contort myself and get to that corner. Not my favorite thing, but we're gonna get it done and hopefully not get all bruised up doing it. All right, well, I got that one installed and already you can see it's kicking up some new stuff like that piece right there came off of something, but it stealths in pretty well. And you can see the flow is hitting much more towards the center of the aquarium and not so much just an inch or two away from those pillars. So I think that's gonna help. Will it actually help? Who knows? Now there's all this debris in the water. So next thing I'm gonna do is take my catch cup couple snails in it, 
Ladybird snacks. And I'm going to do the intake sponges. So while I've already got the ladder out, which, you know, if you don't have to have a ladder, it makes your life a lot easier. But being that I'm already wet and uh, like it needs it, but that's usually, if you have a lot of particles, that's a sign like, okay, well, let me service. Like it'll collect better. You can see there, it's like, there's a lot of gunk in it, but uh, it won't necessarily always collect better. Sometimes the gunk collects gunk better. What, how, that, that doesn't sound right. Uh, when you have to pull through something that's already clogged, it'll collect finer and finer particles. That being said, if you let it get too clogged, it can start slowing down your filtration. And so, you know, even though we upgraded to the Eheim on this side, we have not on the other side. The other side is still the FX6 that is not as much flow. You can kind of see, you know, we've got this, we put the fan on it so it spread it out more. And then this one's the slower flow over here. So I'm gonna grab it and clean them. And then I'll turn this back on. All right, so here's one of the filters. We're gonna get my towels out of the way. And Really, what I want to show, maybe in the light, is what it's collecting. Let's look at this. So you see, you don't see as well on camera. You see all this gunk. It's just going to collect all of that. Now, why do we run pre-filter? We don't want to suck up those big pieces of algae, really. We don't want to suck up fish food. We don't want to suck up babies, all of that kind of stuff. It's easier to pull this off than it is to break that whole canister off and clean it. So, uh... Now I'll show you clean it and I'll show you all the gunk that comes out of this thing. You can kind of see how dirty it still is. And you gotta clean them quite a bit. So we'll keep just making this chocolate milk for probably five minutes or so while you're cleaning. It takes a long time to get these clean, but that's kind of what they're designed to do. You can just see the level of kind of brown that keeps coming out of them. And that would be in your filter, and your filter does the same thing. These also add biological, so it adds mechanical and biological. And yeah, I'm doing it in the sink. Uh, I don't have any chlorine, but even when I did have chlorine, I didn't have a lot, so it wasn't a problem at my old house or the store either. Now, one of the reasons I run a sprayer, and maybe you do it at your kitchen sink or something like that, is I do like, I do prefer to do this move, which I'm hitting my, my light there, so it got all wonky. But I do find this helps clean it a little bit easier doesn't make it easy, but easier. And as you do one side, you flip it over, and you're like, oh, it's all on the other side. So you gotta keep going over it several times. And you gotta just keep getting it until it stops to release some brown. So the problem you'll see is right now, you can probably see, oh, look, you're done, it looks pretty clean. You flip to their side and a lot of it's just there. So you gotta keep rotating and keep cleaning. And that's where most people go wrong, honestly, is they go, oh, I got it clean, it's good enough. They put it back in their tank and then it releases a bunch of debris in there. You really wanna get this pretty darn clean. The cleaner you can get it, the less often you have to do it. And that's also why we like coarse. It doesn't clog up very quick and it can go a long time between cleanings. And the other thing I don't like, so to learn from Corey's mistakes, I don't like the high sprayer. So if you look, so let's pretend this is clean. I'm gonna set it right there. So if you, you look, you see all of this right here, because we've been spraying it up here. And then if you look at my shirt, it sprays on the shirt the whole time. So I wanna get a sprayer that's down low in here so that, and you can kind of do that, like, if I really crank it down, like that's as far as I can go, but I feel like I'm gonna break it, I can get down to there, but I'm still pretty far away, right? And when I go to clean the sink, like I said, I wanna clean that, it's harder to do, and you still get a lot of blowback. 
so hopefully the new sink, uh, the new sprayer is going to help with this problem and make me want to clean a little more and not get soaking wet. So hopefully one of the projects this week is going to be hooking up. It's going to be hard to see. Right down there, there's a, uh, a drain valve for this. I want to adapt from that to a garden hose and run it outside so I can back flush these filters. Now, I gotta buy tubing, it's gonna take a little bit of work, but once I get that done, I can use the same hose to drain this one. I bought another one to hook up to Murphy's tank, and we're gonna try the same system at the store on the 1500 gallon. So, I wanna get it right, so I gotta start working with it. You know, that's the way it goes. Well, I just thought I would end the video watching Lady Bird, see how the tank flow is happening, and just mostly documenting. You know, I originally started this channel to document and share building a fish room and now it's a little more about battling things like algae you know I obviously I know there's hair algae and black beard algae in there and being that it's an 800 gallon ecosystem you well what I enjoy is I have to find a way to change the balance whereas like a 40 breeder you literally could just tear it down bleach it scrub it hydrogen peroxide it any chemical way but here i have to look at it and go okay well we added all the trout good yids. they've been in there now like the the majority of them for you know a week and then you've got ladybird taking big ladybird poops and you've got the horse face loaches and the hillstream loaches breeding in there and you've got some snails and so what do i want to add next i can add Siamese algae eaters, but they're hard to get back out once they're adults. And Siamese algae eaters, when they get really big, typically they eat more meat than algae. And so I sit here going, well, is this what I want to do long term? And so I'm thinking like, there's got to be another, another fish or something in there that will take care of that, or it will just recede. Like there's a, there's a chance that once we run out of hair algae, the trout goodyids will start snacking on that. Oh, look. All the, uh, well, not all, but a bunch of horse face loaches are out and about in the corner there. I don't know what they're they're doing. They're having a meeting, but usually they they hide so much whenever I walk up. So kind of fun just to see some of the different things going on in here. And this is, you know, this view is cool because we can watch movies and things like that. And that's normally what we do in this room now. Um, you can see we got snacks and wife will have people over and let, you know, have kids birthday parties and stuff, but you know, we're not that far off and it probably seems like that, but a lot of what we need now is time and a little bit of tweaking still could be a little bit more flow could be, uh, you know, I don't want to go chemical with it, but you know, a couple more fish and I'm just not sure what the fish are yet. And then I'm not certain on the plants. The plants, I like, so I like the movement of them. I feel like I do kind of want a bigger power head maybe. And, uh, you know, the, the reality is in the next year or two, Lady would probably have to get a bigger aquarium. And so that's weighing on me too. Of like, dang, okay, if that happens, like that's, it's a, it's a big expense, which I realize that's exactly what everyone tells you when you get a puffer. And, uh, you know, I'm ready for it, but at the same time, it's like, okay, well, I gotta make room for that. Do I just order that now and it's ready in six or eight months? Do I wait? And uh, so for now, you know, she's still doing well. And I think the big goal with her is I'd really like to see her get onto a thicker clam or mussel or something like that and, and help grind the teeth down a bit. And then, you know, when she upgrades, the goal would be to then upgrade uh, Elmer. I actually considered trying to put Elmer and Ladybird in the same tank and I just thought oh, if it goes wrong that's so so hard you know if someone takes a bite out of someone that's not good. Also Elmer will eat all the plants and I really like this big tank planted but I know Elmer kind of swimming around some of this and, and that could be some of it. Maybe I need to, like this big thing could come out to like the center 
or more towards the center, which seems crazy to me, but maybe Lady Bird would swim around it. Maybe she wouldn't. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, things to play with. Uh, but being that I've been ordering lots of parts and, uh, you know, kind of got Fish Tank Mike coming back, which that's going to be good, and, and Dean's going to come around and all that, the motivation's back to like, yeah, let's keep working on this because fish are enjoyable, but it's not enjoyable when things are going wrong all the time. And the amount of just travel kept, it was reset after reset, and each one was like it added to the being more demoralized. And so I'm hoping that let's get the wind starting to stack up and when something goes wrong, it doesn't phase me. Um, so yeah, that's really, I'm just back to basics. Reduce the amount of aquariums, increase the amount of time and energy and effort, and we should win because we have the skills. We just haven't had the time. So hopefully you guys have the time and you're enjoying it. We'll see you around and I'll see you in the next video.